I met 21 Savage twice. Both times was in the studio. Mm. Both times I was asleep. Oh, my God. Right? I ain't going to lie, high sleep. You know what I'm saying? The first time, they was like, yo, Trail, get up. 21 Savage here. I was like, huh? Like, 21 Savage here. I'm like, all right. I go back to sleep. He walk in. They wake me up again. He like, what up? I dab him up. Wake up. Dab him up. Boom. They like, yo, get up. Like, get up. Nigga, he about to go record. Like, go in there with him. Like, yeah. y'all go make some shit. I'm like, all right. All right, I got you. Went back to sleep. Woke up. It was, the sun was up. Everybody was gone. Studio empty. Damn. Right? And I know for a fact that one time was in Mid-East Studios in Virginia. Now, the second time... I don't remember where we was at, whether it was Atlanta, Miami, New York, D.C. I don't remember what studio it was. Second time, I'm in the studio sleep. 21 Savage in. 21 Savage in, man. Get up, bro. You hear me? And I stayed asleep. So to answer that question, I never overlooked him. It never was a point where I was like, uh, I don't want to work with that nigga. Like, because I love 21 Savage music. You know what I'm saying? But, um... I never overlooked him, but that I, I had a chance to work with him twice, and I was too f***ed up, right? Too f***ed up to get up and work. And that's one of those, that's one of the things I regret was, was not being able to create some music with Savage, for sure. Yo, what's poppin'? You know what time it is, your boy, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. We're in the building. Uh, this special guest, uh, friend of the show. I always call him friend of the show when they come on the show more than once. Absolutely. Last time we we did an interview, we was in the studio, which is dope. I got to travel, but now you come, me casa, su casa. Fat trailers in the building. What up, brother? What up, bro? How you? Thank you for having me. Of course, man. <clears throat> it's a blessing, man. How you doing, man? What's going on? I'm doing great, man. Mentally, I'm great. Spiritually, I'm great. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm still on the road working. Just dropped the tape, Boosters Keeper, man. And, um, you know, press runs from New York to Atlanta to L.A. I'm good. I'm happy. I'm blessed. Yeah, I was saying, you look good, man. Um, Thank you. Last time I talked to you, I think you was, like, fresh off of doing your bid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, thanks. Did you, you, you ain't never go back in, right? Um, I did briefly, but, you know. That was, like, to finish something. Yeah, 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 to finish something. Finish okay, some, okay. Um, probation time. But that wasn't, like, nothing? No, 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 it wasn't nothing. Too okay, crazy. okay. Yeah. How has it been since then, bro? It's been, like, what, a year, two years? I, don't, I think it's It's like been a about a year. Um, I'd be lying if I told you I kept up with the time, how long I've been home. I know I've been home for more than a year, though, but it's been good. You know what I'm saying? To, um, to be able to still have fans and um, to be able to still have support and people who still demanded music from Fat Trail is a blessing within itself, like we was talking about before the cameras cut on. Mm -hmm. It's a blessing within itself, so um, I'm good. You know, through the trials and tribulations, I'm I'm going to still work and get through it and put my boots on, you feel me? Now, this might sound crazy to most, but I'm pretty sure you'll understand this. Like, you've been home for a year straight. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's been a while since you've done that. As crazy yeah, as that yeah, sounds. Yeah, 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 yeah. How, how is it adjusting to being home for so long now? Um... It's not it's not easy for sure. It's not easy for sure. You know what I'm saying? You know, you on parole and probation. You gotta check in with this people. You gotta do mental health evaluations. You gotta go to these classes, that classes, fill out these paperwork, take you on here. It's still, you know what I'm saying? I got I got my 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 career schedule and I got my government schedule too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's hard to balance out both of them. But you know. What about with, mentally though? Mentally, it could be draining sometimes. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I um I don't want to wake up and go to court sometimes. I don't want to wake up and go see my PO sometimes. But um, just it's just a stipulation of my release, and that's what I got to do. Yeah, I, I only sp speak on that because I feel like most people who have no idea how it feels to grow up in in the cities like where we come from, right? Mm -hmm. In the inner city of DC, mm -hmm. in the city of Baltimore, they never got arrested before. They have no idea how of a mental like strain it can be for somebody that's been in prison for so long Absolutely. and get out. So like, it's just it's it's just a hard thing. So people think that people get out of jail, they go back, they think something wrong with them. But like, bro, that's that that be a lot of people customs after a while. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, it's definitely not an easy thing, and I'm fully aware now that you know the older you get, the more you realize that a lot of people who watch this show or, or watch these podcasts, 
didn't grow up how we did and, mm-hmm. you know, um, college students or, you know, grew up in nice neighborhoods and went to great schools, they'll never really be able to fully um, understand what it is like growing up in the inner city and, and having to protect yourself at a young age and, you know, having to um, become a product of your environment. And it's okay for them to not understand that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I just wish that they wouldn't judge as much either, but it's natural, you know, the, 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 light, the world is the world. People going to judge. People going to have their opinions. But um, it's definitely not easy. So, you know, mentally, I just try to stay focused. Yeah. And, and that's what that's exactly what I was going to go next. Like, because it's easy to judge somebody when you don't know their situation, exactly. right? Exactly. You, you ain't experienced it. Absolutely. And I was wondering, like, does that get frustrating for you when you feel like, but like you working hard to take care of your family. You working hard to stay out of prison. You working hard to stay out of trouble in general. Right. People have no idea. Yeah. Yet they can pass judgment so easy. Yeah. Cause because when they all they read is the um headlines. Yeah. You feel me? So <clears throat> it's easy to say, um, Fat Troll is ungrateful. He don't care about his career. Uh, he makes bad choices. He makes bad decisions. It's easy to say that and unless you walked in my shoes or unless you're in my inner circle. Mm. If you don't know what I'm dealing with, if you don't know how many funerals I pay for, lawyers we didn't pay for, um, 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 you know, the 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 family members that don't come around or that don't come outside that we take care of. It's a lot that come with this. You mm. know what I'm saying? Um it's a lot of it's a big responsibility. So it's easy for them to judge though. No, nah, facts. Anybody that watched my show know it, like I'm a big fan of Meek. And not just Meek, but like anybody that's like that I seen come up, yeah. That's from like the trenches and really made it out the trenches. Absolutely. One thing Meek always talk about is like the headlines and like people just they'll put your name and shit just so they can get a lot of views or a exactly. lot of clicks to get yeah. some money. Yeah. You've been seeing that a lot from you as well. Absolutely, man. You know, I wake up with new stories and new blogs with 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 Fetro name in it all the time, and um, you know when you when you I think that when you decide to be a part of this business. Mm-hmm. That's something that you're going to have to accept. Mm-hmm. Um, mentally, it could be frustrating at times. Um, you could feel attacked a lot at times. You know what I'm saying? As artists, we, we get attacked a lot because the press is in our business and the fans and the world and the blogs is all in your business. So you feel attacked a lot. But at the same time, like I said, this is a, a huge responsibility. We travel around the world. We're making a lot of money doing this music stuff. And I feel like you got to accept what comes with that. Mm. Yeah. It's funny, I was talking to T.I. and um, I was, I asked him about something. It wasn't like messy, but I was just trying to get into like a real conversation. And he said one of the realest things ever said. And I love the way he put it, because it was just real and I had to respect it. He was like, bro, you got to understand like, what's good for you might not be good for me. And yeah. basically what he's saying like, what's good for media, right? Yeah. Might not be good for the artist. And I respect it. Right. And I was wondering, do you think is a, a, a life where the two can coexist respectfully together? Um, yeah. I think it is because, look, you got to look at it like this, right? It's a lot of media outlets and platforms who don't involve themselves in the mess, right. who don't involve themselves into the negativity. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I seen, shout out my homie Reese, I seen Reese post something the other day and they made all the blogs and they was like, yo, the blogs always talk about you catching these cases and you know, such and such, such was arrested for this and arrested for that. And then when the charges get dropped and is oh you go to trial and it's not guilty, nobody report on that. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And that's just a testament to what's going on in the real world. But there are some media people who do highlight the the the, the triumphs. You know what I'm saying? Who don't speak so much about the trials? So it could go hand in hand. You feel mm. me? Yeah. Now it's crazy because I I even see like some uh like just people that get into media and and they come from that environment, but they still go to the route of like just highlighting the bullshit yeah. that's what sells and it's like that's, yeah you know drama sells and, and um you know drama sells man like like I like uh I don't mean to keep doing this right but you good bro shit. I'm just being you real right Cam Newton I heard Cam Newton say yo media talking trash in the media and, and, and you know trolling your opponents and stuff like this that's what sells tickets you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying it sells tickets to the football game like the controversy of these football players and you know what I'm saying sometimes it sells tickets the controversy in this music industry it sells albums you know what I'm saying yeah. it packs arenas but don't nobody 
want to think about the, the the actual murders, the actual shootings, the actual trials. This dude got 30. This dude got 25. This dude got 10. They don't want to highlight that. You know what I'm saying? They want to highlight what brings them a dollar. And everybody is chasing clout and dollars, and a lot of people chasing more clout than dollars right now. No, that's a fact. And especially, like you said, just talking about the uh, music and the controversy. It's crazy because I think I seen uh, Ray Daniel had talk about this somewhere. He was basically saying, like, the difference between Atlanta media and, uh, like, I guess, media in, like... New York or something. Yeah, I don't want to say he said New York because yeah. I don't because I know it get crazy in New York too. So I don't yeah. I want because I know better. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But he was basically talking like academics and um like those guys that stay in compared to like the media in Atlanta. Right. Like niggas know in Atlanta, like you can't just pop off your pop shit and then go outside because these niggas is everywhere you go for. Absolutely. Real. Yeah. Whereas though like an academic he stays in a house. Right. And academics said something that was like, as a media guy, it made sense. He's like, man, look, we the ones that make the risk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we 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 talking about it, and that's what got our platform to grow. So you can't be be mad at me because you ain't taking the risk that I take. Right. And I get it, but again, somebody that come from that, sometimes I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes I'm conflicted because it's like, bro, I I'm from Baltimore. Like, right. bro, these niggas ain't no. Yeah, I mean, I ain't gonna lie. The rap niggas that be having beef. And it just, it, it stay there. Yeah. It be foreign to me. Right. Because where I'm from, like, and I'm not saying nothing wrong with that. I, I, I hope that. I wish that for everybody. But it's like, where I'm from, niggas had beef. It's real beef. Yeah. It ain't just like rapping. Like, <laughs> nah, it's beef. And like, niggas rapping it. Then next day, you yeah, get what I'm trying to say? So absolutely. like, for me to instigate that. Just won't, it don't feel yeah, right on you. It's like, bro, you know better. Nah, but also like, as a man, you reach a certain point where. You got to start accepting accountability too. Mm. So if you, um, although you didn't create the fire, if you poured a little gasoline on there here and there, you a part of that fire. Facts. You know what I'm saying? And um, I feel like a lot of people is 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 starting to realize. Like I ain't gonna name no rappers' names specifically, but with all these trials, all these deaths, all these murders, all these beefs. I think social media, I mean, social media and the media platforms is kind of drawing back on pouring so much gasoline on these fires because this is real life. People are really dying and people is really going to trial and people is really fighting for their life. So I think they should start drawing back on the negativity as to so much, but everybody want clout. It's like once you, I, J Hill, right? Let's say you reach a point where, you know what, I'm not going to speak on ne negativity no more with my guests. I'm not going to pour flame on a fire. It's going to be a new person that's starting a podcast tomorrow, mm. and all they want to do is they all this table right here could be full of gasoline, mm -hmm. waiting to throw gas on the fire, and that's just the way the world works. So it is what it is. Damn, bro, that's, that's so real. Yeah, you know, it's funny, before we, I ain't even getting to my questions yet, but I was looking at our last interview. Yeah. yeah you know what, it'll be dope if you actually had a podcast, bro. You be popping some shit, bro. Nah, look, you know, a lot of people been, um, man, so many people have been telling me that, bro. Like, so many people have been telling me that. Like, even even, even basketball players like my hoopers, like my homies, like Chase Young and them, like, they just be like, yo, Trail, I'm telling you, understand the business side of it, understand the money aspect of it and how you could get it done, and then look into that, man. I'm telling you, just, just go ahead and create a new revenue stream for yourself. But I be feeling like I know so many media platforms and so many podcasts, I be feeling like, man, I don't want to step on their toes like that. And You know what I'm saying? But I don't, I don't know. know. I nigga. might dive into it, though. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Like, I feel like it's funny because I used to look at it like that. Like, I used to be, because I never had, I wasn't a rapper. I wasn't nobody. Like, I really came up off of this shit. So... I used to look at it like the rappers and the niggas that was lit that start podcasts. I would be tight, like, damn man, give me a break, like, let, you know what I'm saying? Let somebody else win. Absolutely. <laughs> Whole time I started to realize that you really just um, reaping the uh, reaping what you sown. Right. You know what I'm saying? Reaping your benefits because you put you put time in to be fat trail. Right. You put time in to be this big mu musician to get these numbers. You put that time in. Right. So if you want to pivot, you know what I'm saying, or do something else. That come from the work you put in already. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. you're right. That's a great point. So that's, that's a, a fact. It's just, you know what I'm saying? Like, shit, you should definitely look into that. You be popping your shit. I'm like, nah, that's nigga. Nah, nigga that's shit. a great point. I appreciate it, man. A lot of people have been telling me that too. That's definitely something. It's a business venture. So it's it's not it's not something that I'm gonna just say, nah, I ain't into that. I ain't gonna do that. It's definitely something we're gonna explore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And shit, is Chase still in DC? Um, he played for the Saints now, but he so he still he got really a, Yeah, he still got a lot of family back there. I ain't gonna man. lie, y'all two probably will go crazy. Who, me and Chase Young? That probably be hard. Oh, that's a dope ass idea. That probably be fire. I wow, I never thought about it like yeah, that. Shout out Chase, man. I got yeah. holler, man. <laughs> that'd be yeah. hard. Oh, you... I could just switch it up because you know, like John Wall, oh, uh, Joshua crazy. Morgan, yeah. 
All those guys, like... Who else you got down there? The nigga that played for the Lakers. What's his name? Damn. Fuck, I'm going to have to cut this. I ain't going to cut it, but... Light-skinned um, Cook. Oh, Quinn, Quinn Cook. Cook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Quinn Cook back home. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be fire. Yeah, yeah damn. Shout out to Quinn, Y'all got man. some yep. niggas coming out of D.C., bro. Come on, man. KD, Caleb Williams. Yeah, and y'all like nobody come out. I'm not trying to hear no, yeah. nobody talk all the yeah, like, Y'all man. like nobody come, like it'd be mad niggas come out of DC. Exactly, bro. It is, man. That's crazy. Just not as much as you know of other states, but yeah, for sure. I ain't well, I feel like you got some dogs in the city, man, for sure. Nah, facts. And even like on the I guess the PG side, it ain't too far, but I mean shit, it's close enough. Yeah. God damn. Yeah, absolutely. Yo, how was the um before I get into the album, right? Uh how was the the music going for you? Like, feel like how how you feel like the 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 people were accepting you when you dropped in the music? Um, I feel like you know they 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 listening to a more mature fat trail, a more um, my sound is more fine tuned. I'm in that pocket as to where I know which way I want to go on each record. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like um, my my reception as well. Mm. You feel me? Um, we always striving for new heights and we always trying to reach new fans. So I'm never settling. Right. You know what I'm saying? And um. God is giving me everything that I deserve and what I don't have, I got to work to get that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So well, I don't. I never focus on what I'm not doing, the, uh, the the festivals that I'm not booked on. I focus on what I am booked on. Yeah. And then in the background, we're trying to work on how do we get on these festivals? Who do we need to reach out to? Man, it would be great if we got some verses from this dude, this dude, this dude, because or this female, because such and such is going to be on that. Like, that's where we at with it now. Instead of... um trying to let everything come to us, we attacking now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because the, the wisdom is, is starting to get there. When I started rapping when I was young, and I used to just let people do what they do and I focus on the music. Well, now I want to focus on the music and everything else. You know what I'm saying? So we working towards that. Yo, you know what that remind me of? Um, I think I heard, uh, I don't know if it was Joe, some, it was somebody that talked about it and they, the way they went into it was so deep. I mean, so dope. I think it was Joe Button, but they were talking about Lil Wayne when he got snubbed from the Super Bowl, right? Okay. But they were saying how they they compared it to Usher. They was like, when Usher wanted to get on the Super Bowl, he was proactive. Like right. like you said, I'm just focused on all the shows I got to get to so I can continue to build a career. Absolutely. And they was like, Usher, and correct me if I'm wrong, anybody of y'all remember, or uh, just forgive me if I'm wrong, <clears throat> blame it on my mind and not my heart. I feel like they was like, yo, Usher went out, got a residency yeah, in Vegas. Vegas, right. And just performed. Right. For mad shows. They and probably then, wasn't even getting paid that much. But he performed the show the Super Bowl uh, um, staff or whatever that I'm ready for the stage. Exactly. And they was like, Lil Wayne really ain't do that. Oh, okay. Whereas though, if he would have did that, they probably that probably would have been extra ammunition to be like, yo, we need Wayne. Right, yeah. So remind me, he was like, man, I'm just I'm just getting on whatever absolutely. I can get on. <clears throat> um, if that is true, and I, I know I heard you say, man, for, you know, let the people forgive you if you're wrong. That sound about right. You want to know why? Because Usher shows have been going viral lately. Like, mm. you know, he's been doing a lot of different things. Um, so, yeah, like I said, you, you can't definitely focus on what's not going on. You got to focus on what is going on and, and then try to put some time in and some resources in to figure out how you could get that done. And I'm um I'm almost sure that the United States of America went into so much of an uproar. I'm pretty sure that the NFL or Jay-Z or the Super Bowl, whoever controlled it, Pepsi, whoever controlled the halftime, whatever, I'm, I'm not sure who really controlled it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they're going to try to implement Lil Wayne into that somehow, some way. Yeah. Um, because it does make a lot of sense. But um shout out to Kendrick too. Who who who's to say that Kendrick don't deserve it? Yeah, no, nah, so, yeah. I mean it makes sense. Uh I feel like um I'm not gonna lie, for 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 face value, for like when I first saw it, of course I was like, damn, Wayne should have got it. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna keep it hundred. And Wayne, I feel bad because Wayne should be right there. Sorry, that's my dog. But Wayne should be on the wall. But um mm -hmm. I feel like uh when I after like after all the commotion was done and I start seeing the performances and I'm like, okay, Jay might have known what he was doing. Yeah. Cause like, and, and this is nothing against Lil Wayne, because everybody know Lil Wayne to go. Like, when he gotta have that conversation. Y'all yeah, know what's up. Like, yeah, y'all know what's that's up. That's not to be discussed right, or so argued. I'm just talking about the performance-wise. It could use some work. Cause you look at Kendrick Lamar shows and you look at Lil Wayne shows, it's like, all right, from a business standpoint, I, I will understand why they would choose yeah. Kendrick Lamar. So, I mean, whatever the case. I'm pretty sure they're going to make it work, man. Yeah, they might. Not, to, not to sidetrack you, but how you feel about this Baltimore versus D.C. fight going on in Houston? Tank versus, I forgot the dude's name, Bro, so Roach. forgive me. Roach. Yeah, yeah, Roach. You, you, you got to know that name. <laughs> I should. I should. He from your area. Yeah, 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 I should, but. Uh, you know what I'm saying? All right. 
Damn, why, why are you asking me questions? Um, nah, I just wanted to ask you that one question. That's all. Because once you brought up, I, I know where you're from. I remember mm. where you're from. But once you brought it up, right then and there, I wanted to ask you because I've been having people in my DM like, nah, what you going to do? And you got to represent the home team. And, yeah. you know, I've been a Tank fan for years. Of course. And it's like, of course, I'm going to always support my city, my home. But I got to be realistic, too. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I just want to know how you <laughs> feel about it, though. I mean, all right. So Tank is my dog. I interviewed Tank, like, a while ago. Like, that's really my homie. Um, I mean, my dog. But uh, I wish it could be somebody uh, closer to his level. But I, I also understand that <laughs> niggas ain't trying to fight him. So, so I, I, I'm, and I'm being real. I ain't want to say this, but shit, you asked me, I'm going to be real. I feel like when I first saw it, I'm like, yo, what? I'm tired of this shit. Like, yeah. I want to see... Him, him fight. fight a name. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. But if niggas ducking him, like I from what I've seen, he 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 reached out to niggas, niggas, uh Devin ain't wanna fight him. Um he already fought Ryan, he beat the dog shit out of him. Mm. Um what's the other young nigga named Stevenson, Shakur Stevenson, even though I don't think he could do shit with him. I guess I don't he not even, trying are to they fight the same weight class though. They can't fight each other, can they? They I feel like they could make it work. I'll be hearing birds chirp so much about Tank and Stevenson. Can they fight each other? They, not they could make it work. Like 135, Stevenson can make 135, right? I'm sure he can. What, what, what is he, Alex? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he can make that work. Like, Shakur could definitely fight in 135. Because I think Tank ain't going nowhere. He said it. I'm fighting in one, I'm a 135 fighter. Right. Who else? Um, But even like, Devin not really 135, to be honest. Mm. Shit, uh, Ryan wasn't 135. Right. Um... Ryan, but, Ryan, Ryan will fight whoever, man. Yeah, not nah, facts. He I respect fight. Ryan because he'll fight whoever. You yeah. feel me? Yeah, he will. I had a similar respect for Devin before the Ryan fight because he will fight whoever. Who, Devin? Not saying he was the best, but he would fight whoever. Who? Devin. He would fight whoever. Why? Why? How can he would fight whoever if he won't fight Tank? I know. That's what I'm saying. He yeah. won. He, before the Ryan fight, he was talking shit. He oh, wanted. Oh, he you got to say he'll fight whoever outside of Tank. Yeah, he yeah. don't want to see Tank for nah, some but, reason. No, no, no. But I mean, but to, to this fight, um, Roach is want to come up. Um, I I don't really have no opinions because it's Tank. Like, come on, I don't think yeah. it's an even close fight. Right. To be honest, mm -hmm. but far as you, if you ask me about you, I think, I mean, you got to go with your hometown. Right. That don't mean that you don't I'm, fuck with I'm, Tank. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I'm rooting for homie. You feel me? And and again, I want to go back to when I, I didn't know his name because honestly, and I'm I'm not trying to bid or nothing, I honestly didn't know his name until it stopped popping up on the phone and mm. the promo started happening. Like, yo, this who Tank going to be fighting? Then you read the comments and then they, and they say where he from yeah. and all that. And I'm like, like, like you said, I kind of felt the same way. When I heard the name, I'm like, ah, like, when are we going to get a name? Like, yeah. I want to. I want him to fight one of them. One of them ones. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm tired of hearing people saying Tank don't fight nobody. Yeah. I'm tired of hearing that. So from here on out, I want to see Tank fighting the number two contender at all times. You nah, know? you hit it right on the spot. Yeah. Did you find it, Alex? Okay. Yeah. So that's 135 in there, right? Yeah. I figured. Right. Okay. He could fight Tank. Like, yeah. He could fake. He just beat, man, these niggas be capped, bro. Like, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, niggas be capped, man. But whatever. Yo, I seen somewhere, um, before we get into... No, nah, let's go straight to it. Um, Boosters Keeper. Yeah. I just dropped that, a project called Boosters Keeper, yeah. That's that's your project you just dropped? Yeah. Um, that Booster was your friend. Yeah, my best friend. Your best brother, friend, he, he passed away. Yeah, yeah, he passed away <laughs> while I was locked up. Yep. Yeah. Um, how was recording this project compared to all of the other projects you've done? Um, that's a great question. Um, recording this project, to be honest, I was just recording so much when I first came home and everything was just coming from off the heart, off the mind, you know what I'm saying, of course. And it was just uh it was a it was a it was emotional at times, but at the same time it was fun at times too. Mm. You know what I'm saying, working in his memories. And knowing that he looking down on me and trying to remember the good times, and you got friends and family around you who gonna remind you of all the good times while you working. So creating this project, it, I was, I was cool. It's it got good. emotional. It got rocky sometimes. You know what I'm saying? But at what moments you think it got rocky? Um, when you when you when you getting ready, when you getting geared up for the press run, or when I got sent the, the cover for the tape, you know, certain little things just hit you like ah, you know what I'm saying. Or when I'm headed to the airport, and some sometimes I have to travel like 
you know, me and my manager, we moving around so much, doing so much. Sometimes I travel alone. Mm. So when I'm at that airport and I'm going through TSA and he used to be like right there with me, you know what I'm saying? It had dawn on me. Mm. You feel me? So just during those times. Now, do you feel like at any time, like, because you wasn't there, like, you had a part to play in it? Or not a part to play, but like, you know how sometimes things happen, you kind of blame yourself. Um, You know, I got a lot of friends and family who tell me, and I understand this too, if I was home, things would have been different. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, we probably would have been away. We probably would have been handling something else. Or he might have not have been doing what he had been doing if I was home. Mm. So, you know, um, that does play a role. It's, a, it's something that reoccurs in my mind all the time. But at the same time, I got I, I fully understand that God makes no mistakes either. You feel me? And I fully understand that, you know, he set me down for those four years and made me fight these cases and go through everything for a reason. I mm. lost my grandmother, too, while I was incarcerated. And that's my number one favorite person in the whole world. So... Things happen for a reason, um, but I definitely don't want to blame myself, but I am fully aware that if I was home, things could have been different. You know, it's crazy, bro. I, um, My brother had got shot, and, like, everybody knew, like, I was uh, I was the guy that, like, I don't know, like, I just, I wasn't no gangster, far from it, but I wasn't no hoe, for real, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So whatever that means. So I never, I never forget, he, <clears throat> he got shot, and he was like, man, I wish he was dead, because if he was dead, it wouldn't have went down like that. Right. And... Of course, the first thing I'm thinking is like, yeah, because we won't be in that situation, right? Right. But then I get to thinking some other things, and I'm like, damn, like, wait, what if I was there? What, what if you was there? Could have went the other way. Could have been you. Exactly. Could have been there. Yeah. That's yeah. It, 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 it. So these, mm. all these things is what go on through your mind. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? All these things go on through your mind. All of them. Yep. And I know you feel like in your heart, like you would die for your brother. Mm. And I know your brother understands that as well. You know what I'm saying? So all those things play a part in your mind, but you know. God make no mistakes and um what's done is done. And and how you bounce back from that, how you react to the whole entire situation as far as his children, his family, his friends, um, it's a testament to your character and what you choose to do. So that's why I gotta stay strong and continue to keep working and do what I gotta do because a lot of people don't know. If you see some of them behind the scenes footages, I got booster kids with me. Mm. His baby mothers is there at the show, bringing the babies and all that, you know what I'm saying? Christmas, Thanksgiving, all everything. Niggas still got a purpose. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So you can't give up and you can't let life beat you down. You just got to take the punches and roll with them. Yo, you had one of my favorite quotes from our last interview. You said, um, taking care of your family, that's gangster. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. robbing, stealing, killing, that ain't gangster. Being able to uh, <clears throat> make sure your, your family's safe and taking care of them is gangster. Absolutely. And I was wondering, like, that's something we had to learn. Absolutely. But you... Freshly out of prison, you still gotta go home. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. By the grace of God, you was able to get you was able to get out there, but even that takes some time to be able to transition. Absolutely. Right? Do you feel still to this day that like the streets is kind of like pulling you back to the original what we what we what we thought was gangster? Like the streets is pulling you to that? Um, nah, no, nah. Because you re you reach a point in life where you don't even allow that to happen, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And and I say that to say, it's certain conversations I don't even indulge in. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Um, it's certain, it, it's hard to put it in in terms, but like as a man, it's certain things that I don't even indulge in no more. So I'm, I'm not even gonna put myself in a position as to where you, you might attempt to pull me back into doing something that I don't wanna do. Mm -hmm. You feel me now? Do I go see my friends and family? Absolutely, I do. Um, I know, but I know when when to come out and when not to come out, and I know when to leave and when mm. to stay too. You know what I'm saying? And um, it's all about decision making. A lot of things that I I would have done back in the day, I'm just simply choosing not to do it at at this day and age. I wish we all could think like that, but I think thinking like that comes from having to go through something. Absolutely. Like, cause if you when you go through something, it's like you know that, bro. I I know what's up. Y'all know what's up. I ain't got shit to prove to right, y'all. Right. Like, I don't have to come out at the time. Like, mm -hmm. y'all got it. But it be the ones who ain't really go through nothing that feel like they gotta prove everything. But who, who's the judge? Cause we've been there. Absolutely. We've been we've been in a point where we wanted to prove something. And that's why I don't get mad. You know what I'm saying? That's why, you know, I used to think like coming up, one of the most cowardice things I used to hear 
when I was from four years old always up was just walk away. Mm -hmm. I used to think that was the most cowardice thing I ever heard in my life, right? Just walk away. Now that I got kids, mm -hmm. now that I done went to prison, now I done seen a nigga dial with a, a, a wall phone on the phone. I seen a nigga dial with a piece of chicken. I seen a nigga dial with getting a ride from down the street, like from, from where your car parked at to where, the, where that Mexican restaurant at. I seen a nigga die because a nigga told him no about that. Mm. So I say that to say, all these things I saw, walking away might be one of the most gangstest things you could do right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? To save you the lawyer fees, the funeral fees, uh, this child having PTSD or whatever they growing up with because you dead and gone and never coming back, or they done seen your murder on YouTube and now they can't unsee it. Before you let allow all that to happen, walking away might be one of the most gangstest things you could do right now. Mm. And I'm gonna add to this. Not to keep saying where we come from, but it's real, bro. Yeah. That's, that was our environment, bro. Yeah. It just is what it is. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's great that we could talk like this now that we out of town. And, <laughs> yeah, it's like, bro, nah, that's where we come but from. Go ahead, though. So, like, when we came up, like, all we knew was fight, protect ourselves, shit like that, right? Yeah. So, let me give you another perspective. Imagine it, that's the hard thing to do to walk away because yeah. all you know is go. Right. It's been times where I swear to God in my life, mm -hmm. I literally had tears coming. You got to ask my act. Like, <laughs> I cried because I had to walk away from a fight. Yeah. Because a nigga tried me, and in my mind, all I knew was this nigga think I'm a pussy. <laughs> I, like, in my mind, it's like, bro, that's so hard to re reshape your thinking, bro. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's frustrating, not frustrating, but it gave me chills because it's like, I know kids out there who can't, who, who aren't able to. Like separate their thoughts from, right. you know what I'm saying, their emotions. Yeah. And it's like, bro, I remember crying like, yo, I want to punch this nigga in the mouth. Right. But it's not smart. You got more to lose. Just walk away. Just, bro. Yeah. That is really hard, bro. Yeah, like, absolutely. it's hard. Like, um, <clears throat> piggyback off what you just said, like, my little homie, little Kai, right, under the label, little NSC Kai, he from the South Side, right? Kai just turned up, what, 18 or 19, you know what I'm saying? He just lost his best friend, Rax. Shout out 23 Racks. He just lost his best friend Racks to the streets to gun violence, right? And he from a hood just like I'm from a hood, just like you from a hood in Baltimore. And some of the things I hear him say, I know for a fact, bro, you shouldn't do that. Mm. I'm, a, I'm about to give you every reason why you shouldn't, shouldn't do that. But I know for a fact that at his age and what he's been taught coming up on the South Side, he feel like it's no way I could do that, bro. There's no way I could walk away from this situation. Mm, mm, mm. You know what come behind me, and I do. You feel what I'm saying? And that's why I be trying to talk to his older homies. You know what I'm saying? And be like, yo, we got to see the bigger picture for Kai. We got to want this for Kai, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But at the same time, I know what he going through. I know the, the battles that he fighting of, of being a young and turnt nigga from your hood and, and the business that you got to stand on about it. And it's just unfortunate that that's what we was taught as coming from our area. That's what we was taught from youngers is like, you know, protect this shit, rep this shit. Um, you in it till you die. <laughs> like, and, and, and you got to abide by the, by the uh, majority rule around mm -hmm. the way. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So even if you don't agree with it, if ma the majority agree with it, you got to roll. Mm -hmm. And you know what's up if you don't roll. So, Yo, that, that reminds me of, um because you said he on a label. Yeah. And I, I was just listening to a song with him on a... Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. <clears throat> I, uh, I heard um, Skiller Baby said, uh, rap, hip-hop is a young dude sport. Right, right. And... I was just wondering what you think about that because, like, you, are, you're a lot older than 18, right? You're yeah. still young, but they call shit. He was like Drake. I think Drake is like 36, 38. I don't know, but whatever. Right, right. He, he he said Drake was old, and I was like, yo, damn. For somebody Skiller said that. Yeah, he was like Drake Future. They, they, that's what they call old now. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's what they call older. Yeah, it's shout like, out to my dog Skiller. <laughs> yeah. Skiller is a young nigga. Yeah, you so know what I'm saying? he's not sexy red age. He's not uh. Uh, uh, Lotto age, yeah, right, right. Um, D Lo, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. so basically, like, man, it's a, hip hop is a young nigga sport, right? And you know, it's been a lot. I of feel like I feel it. I feel as though that's opinionated, though. Like that may be his opinion because futures, future sell records, yeah, future sell out arenas mm -hmm. worldwide. Kanye West, so does Kanye West. But I, I guess you he was saying man? every, so he was saying everybody not going to be a future or a oh, Drake. Oh yeah, so yeah, I guess he was using them as an outlier because oh, they okay. are older. But right, right. I said Drake because it's like. Drake older. I'm like, that nigga is still damn near my age, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he's like, everybody not going to be a future. Everybody not going to be a Drake. Right. So, but for the majority, 
is a young nigga sport. And I'm listening to your music and I'm like, this still sound good. <laughs> but we still having this conversation and I, and I, and I do see the, the it's a clear difference in the thought process between how you think and like you said, one of your young niggas. Right. I'm wondering like, how does that affect the music and how does that affect the people who are receiving the music? Um, well, it could go either way. And I say that to say this, right? I know how to tap into my young nigga bag. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Because I know what the young niggas love. I used to be a, a super young nigga turned in the streets doing a rock of wild dumb shit. I know what the young niggas love. You know what I'm saying? But I also, I also know the 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 mode of a of a future, the mode of a of a Rick Ross or the mode of a Jay Z's um, music. You got to appreciate that because they gonna boss you up. Mm -hmm. They gonna level <laughs> you up. They gonna let you know that your floor should be marble. Mm -hmm. They gonna let you know that you get a car wash every day. Mm -hmm. um, it go both ways. You, you get what I'm saying? It, it it definitely go both ways. And future, I think, is one of the big exam biggest examples of. And forgive me if I'm if I'm wrong, but I I just remember future birthday coming across my screen, and he was like 38 or 39 or something. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But if you get in the car and play Little Demon, you sound like he's 18. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So who's to say that music is really a a, a, a young nigga sport? Because it's dudes out here who still give you that feel. You know what I'm saying? Who the, the they you still playing in the trap, and the trap could be full of sixteen year olds, or it could be a a, a very mature trap full of thirty year old <laughs> niggas in there who who playing spades and smoking weed. You know what I'm saying? But music is music. Oh, shout out my dog Skiller, baby, too though. Forty, he, he, he forty. I think Drake oh, is future? like thirty. Yeah, future is officially forty. Yeah, how old Man. is Drake? Like thirty nine? Is he forty now? Bro, thirty seven. See, that's Bro. crazy. Play Lil' Demon, man. Do that sound like a 40-year-old? No, nah, but that's what I was going to ask you, though. <laughs> like, hey, don't, even... don't. Go. After this podcast is over, everybody get in their car and just play Lil' Demon. No, nah, but his whole tape is, is good. <laughs> I, I was going to say, but, like, sometimes you might not be... Because it's a difference, right? Like, Future, again, Future is one of them one-offs. Like, Future does a great job at, like, catering <laughs> to the young audience. But let's yeah. look at somebody like Jay-Z. Like you said, he going to let you know that your floor should be Marvel. Yeah. He going to let you know that... <laughs> Man, you you were arguing over, over a fucking block that ain't yours, right? right yeah. So I, it, it automatically takes me to like when he dropped four four four. Mm -hmm. That was a clear project that was four adults. Yeah. And the adults, I I loved it. Growing up, I'm like, oh shit, like I understand. He talking about marriage. He talking about family feud. Like nobody wins. Like he's talking about all them things that adults talk about. Right. And I'm I'm talking to you, and I'm like, you your mind, you clearly ain't on young nigga shit. Mm -hmm. But like you said, you could tap into it. But does it ever get? Is that because you can? Or you want to? It's a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. I can and I want to. And here, here's a, here's an example for my to answer your question, right? I do it because I can because I feel as though I'm, a, I'm talented enough to do it. I want to because me and my little youngers, we still, we still, we still. Uh, what's up, nigga? You can't fuck with me on the verse. Mm -hmm. What, man? I bet you can't rap on this beat. I bet you can't rap on this beat. Okay, it's still a family competitive ship. Like you get what I'm saying, or like. When I get in the room with, with the Skiller babies, you know what I'm saying. I since, we gonna use Skiller since you brought his name up. Yeah. And let's let's be clear. I don't think we saying Skiller called any of these artists yeah, old no. on some sneak dissing type shit. So know. let's be clear about that. They older than right. like Boss Man D'Lo uh, or him. Sexy Red, yeah, or him, him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I want to because it was dope to get in the studio and tap. Like when I got into the studio, our first time in the studio with Skiller. He went through his email and chose all the beats. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So the Can't Stop Stunting record, that beat came out of his beat pack, out of his email. You feel me? So if you, if you even though I'm on the hook of Can't Stop Stunting and I'm on the bridge, it sound like it's my record. But that was his beat. He just let me run the record. You know what I'm saying? We made it like three, four records that night. You feel me? But that was his bag. Like all them beats, those was his bag. You know what I'm saying? And I I jumped in his bag. You feel me? I'm 34 years old. Mm -hmm. You feel me? It's a lot of young niggas who call me uh old head or OG. You know what I'm saying? I, I be telling the youngest man, I'm a single OG. I ain't a double OG or a triple OG yet. Mm -hmm. I'm a s I'm still a single OG. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But um I, I wanna tap into that young nigga bag just to show like I ain't even know that was Skiller's opinion. So now that I know that his opinion, it make me feel even better because every time I'm in the studio with him, bar for bar, verse for verse, hook for hook. Mm. You feel me? And I'm doing that with a with a with a young lit young nigga. Yeah, I from brought Detroit. it up because when they said like, so forty, I understand. Maybe you say forty old, <laughs> but like when he said Drake, I'm like, damn, niggas really think we old because I'm thirty three. <laughs> yeah. So like Drake thirty seven, 
Like yeah. you're 34. That's what even I brought it up because like, I'm listening to your music and I'm like, the first thing I thought about was like, y'all remember when Skiller Baby said like, uh, it's a young man's sport. And I get it. I, I get what he's saying. Yeah, like, it ain't, yeah. He ain't really saying nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I mean, it's some niggas out here that's 35 that's still spitting some shit. Like, mm -hmm. Absolutely. But how, how old is Kendrick, man? Kendrick Future probably spit hot fire. But I think he, but but in, in, in skill of defense, I think when he said Drake and Future, he just ain't named all of the 35 right, plus. Right, right, but, right, yeah. but still, he was saying like, those are outliers. He like, everybody not going to be them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which is understandable. And and just to, and just to segue off of what we're talking about, Meek Mill music right now, mm. that shit is on a whole nother level. Yeah, it's different. It's different. That shit is on a whole nother. But that's why I like. I think some people might have to put that shit in chopped and screwed just to hear what the fuck he's saying. He's talking on a whole nother different type of level right now. But that's why I like it, and that's so. And it's the conversation. Maybe this conversation not fair between us two because we thirty three and thirty four, right? right? Mm -hmm. It's still not given. <laughs> like, uh, I hate to say this because I don't want to say that I'm comparing nobody either. It's not. It don't sound like Boss Man D'Lo, right? Yeah. Even though Boss Man D'Lo shit crank, yeah, absolutely. But it still says you could tell the difference, absolutely, because me been through some shit, like absolutely. And that's why I'm wondering, like, but I don't know. I just feel like it both can hit the same. Absolutely, it can, man. It can. So you know, and then like, listen, man. When it come to like business, right? When it come to selling records or, or doing concerts, you know, selling out shows or arenas or whatever, it's cool to let the young artists have the uh, college homecomings and or what I'm not saying that it's, it's young artists that do arenas and all type of shit, you feel me? Glorilla, do arenas. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the list goes on of young people who do doing arenas, you know what I'm saying? Um, but like, it's cool. It's cool for everybody to have their own fan base and their own, eight. like, yeah. we gotta start. I'm still under that, I come from under that law where first of all, we African-Americans. Second of all, we was born poor. Mm. So everything that we blessed with, I'm not about to fight you over your fans. I'm not about to, um, I be hearing stories of people be like, yo, we on a concert. Damn, man, hold up. Nah, they say I supposed to go out before you. Man, I ain't going out there before you. Fuck, I look like I got more hits than you. Man, watch out. Let me go out there. Get the fuck out of the way. Mm -hmm. Man, we come from the trenches, man. Let me go out there and get on the stage. I don't give a fuck who go the fuck out first or who going out last. I'm trying to get on the stage, man. Mm -hmm. These people need to see this shit. Mm -hmm. We blessed. We got to stop focusing on the nothing shit. You nah, know what I'm saying? Do you think, so it's funny, I was talking to uh, a guy named Punch. He's a DJ out of uh, New York. He actually managed... Um, uh, shit a lot. Bobby Smurda at one point. Um, I ain't gonna say the other guy's name, but uh, he worked with Pop Smoke. A lot of people out of New York. And he he made a, a great point saying that uh, he think hip-hop is the only genre of music that ages the artist, right? right. Like, whereas though, it's like you got hip-hop contemporary, whereas though that's for the older rappers and the right, older right. artists. And he's like, it, it makes it to a point where, and I'm not saying it verbatim, but this is basically his point, was like, it makes it to the point where our older artists is kind of discouraged the drop music because he got to compete with the 18-year-old. Yeah. It's like, no way my music going to compete with an 18-year-old when it all should just be, like, it should be a, another, like, another genre for, like, the older music. Do you yeah, think yeah, that yeah. as well? Um, no, nah, I don't think that. I'm not I'm not under that opinion. Um, I feel as though, you know, once you create a fan base and once you have people who love what you're saying and, and who understand your mind as an artist, you know, whether you're a male or female, and I'm going to use a great example, right? I'm going to use a great example. I don't know. You know, it's there. you got Summer Walker, her, Jasmine Sutherland, all these singers, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know a young girl who don't love Beyonce. Facts, yeah. <laughs> I don't know a young... I got a daughter who's 17, loves Beyonce. And she don't know nothing about... Um, What's my favorite song by Beyonce? His his brown eyes tell me so. Ain't it called Brown Eyes? My daughter don't know nothing about the song Brown Eyes. Mm. You get what I'm saying? But like, great music, great music. You can't put an age on great music. You feel what I'm saying? I got young point. niggas who who telling me who who telling me about my album and, and who tell, telling me what's their favorite verse and what's their favorite line from my tape. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, damn, for real, Shorty, you fuck with that? But at the same time, I'm thinking, damn, Shorty, I ain't think you would bump my shit. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So. It, it, it goes both ways, fact. man. But I feel as though music is timeless. You can't put no age group in it. All right, so I, I, I'm curious to see what you think about this. 
Because it is a such thing as just young nigga music. Oh, so yeah, it DC, is, for sure. DC got this genre of music, and I just found out that, I guess, Lil Dude was the, were the creator of this. Free car music. Okay. Like, are you liking this? I know it's DC, so you got to ride with DC, but... Can you make like? Are you liking that? You you making free car music because that's what the young niggas want. Like, what you? I got think? a couple. I got a couple of free car joints. Right? Oh man! Nah, but listen though. <laughs> Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. I'm from Washington D.C. Though you feel me? So I I understand that that's a part of our culture. It's like it's like if I put out a a record tomorrow and it got go go sound into it. That's a part of our DC culture, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So you gotta get on that wave. Um, as far as you saying, I'm not sure if Lil Dude created the sound to the free car wave. I'm not sure. Um, I have I, I was talking to uh, KP Skywalker. He okay, said, yeah, well, he's 21. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. Shout, have out, no, shout out, shout out to KP. Yeah, man. I have no idea, bro. Um, yeah, I don't have no problem with the free car music because my city, like, we have we a real unique city. You know what I'm saying, and and that's just one of the big one of the big things that's going on in DC um, music. You know, they don't call they don't yeah like how Chicago call this drill music, mm -hmm. in DC they call it free car music. And um, I listen to a lot of I listen to a lot of artists from DC, bro, a lot. So so you I still understand. can listen to the, like the young niggas' music t right now? Yeah, because I I hear what they saying. I know what they saying. Like like, I you you from Baltimore, right? Mm -hmm. You probably hear the lyrics. But don't un don't get what he's trying to say. Me being from the city, I know I know what he's saying. You know what I'm saying? Okay, you're right. You're right. Yeah. There's a guy named N N A S G Chaz, and um he he got he he got some motion, but he's young as hell. Right. I think he got a song called like Shrooms and um this shit go crazy. <laughs> hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, now you're right, and I understand because I'm from the city. I think I know. If I'm not mistaken, I think I know who you're talking about. Somebody just played, somebody from Baltimore. He from Baltimore? Yeah, he from Baltimore. Yeah, it's called um, Dawn and Shrooms. Yeah, when somebody you get a played it. Shit go crazy. Yeah. But like like you said, because I'm from that city, right? I hear it different, like it's mm -hmm. fire. So like maybe because, I, but because I'm not from DC, right. it's like it's hard to like hear. Yo, do you feel like, that's, and, and we, I, I touched on this a little bit. I feel like y'all niggas is ungrateful, man. Who? DC. What you mean? They talk. I feel like niggas. I always hear rappers in DC talking about like, man, that's why nigg uh, niggas ain't making it or we ain't making it big. Like I always hear this conversation. I'm like, man, y'all niggas is crazy. There's so many people that come out of DC. Um, I know you hear this conversation. Like, nah, what you, what you? I think, I think what you're talking about is um, us not working together more. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like a George, like a Atlanta. How the Atlanta dudes do. How to how to how to Houston and how Houston and Dallas. Mm -hmm. Like I just seen a video the other day. It had like every rapper in Dallas that's lit right now on one song. And they did a tribute to the old Hot Boys video. You know what I'm saying? The old bandana's big t-shirt. But it'd be great if we could do that in DC. That's what they talking about. Mm. You know, because we got our hoods is, you know what I'm saying? We in hoods. We don't have Crips and Bloods. We got hoods, and you know DC is is really super, super, super divided. You know what I'm saying? And um, I don't think we ungrateful. It's just like I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it really gangster with you, right? A lot of these venues, these BET awards, Grammy awards, da, 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 da. if this rapper come, we can't invite this rapper, mm. or, or or Rolling Loud or DMV Summer Jam. If we book this rapper, we can't book this rapper. That's a huge problem business wise. Okay. That's a huge problem business wise. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And <clears throat> that's where that stemmed from. Yo, I ain't gonna lie. D like, what's going on with DC right now? It's crazy <laughs> in the city, bro. Like, it, this has to be like one of the worst times it's ever been. Outside of um, when we was the murder capital, I think we was in the murder capital in the late 80s, early 90s. We was the murder capital back when Tony Lewis, seeing Rayful and all them was on the street. Mm hmm. We was the murder capital. But I think, if I'm not mistaken, according to the Washington Post, the, the time this generation right here is, has this been the worst generation in Washington, D.C. since the crack era hey, in the damn. 80s. Well, like, well, you know, I mean, you is that still um, tells me, without indicting nobody. No, 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 no. I think it's, uh, you know, the, the youngest got social media now, this Instagram live and this, these showing your locations right then and there at the same time. This, um, 
instantly uploading to YouTube, dissing, and you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's at an all-time high. Not to mention, you know, when I was coming up, when I was coming up, I was born in 1990, right? Mm -hmm. When I was coming up, my first gun was a revolver. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the little Smith six shot Western deuce joint. deuce joint. Yeah, yeah. Six shot deuce deuce. Then I got like a I got a chrome 380. It held like eight or nine shots or something. Then you worked your way up to a guard. Well, now these youngers is turning 18 years old and they going to go buy big shit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You can go buy 100 shots at 18 years old. Some some states you don't you you just gotta not be a felon. Mm -hmm. You just gotta not be a felon to carry a weapon. You don't have to get it registered. Nothing in some of these states. So, you know, these youngers walk around with 50 shots, 100 shots, man, and they trying to let somebody feel that shit. It's unfortunate, but that's life. You know what I'm saying? Um, I wish it wasn't that way, but um, I don't know what's going on in the city. It's just, you know, it must be in the water, man. The youngers is turned, man. They younger turn right now. Yeah, it's going crazy. They act like these cameras don't exist. They act like the camera is like a... A tree or Bruh, something. It's funny because, like, you know, like, you know how <laughs> old niggas think. I, at one point, right, before I got smarter, or before I started to learn more about the young niggas, I used to, I remember it was a time where the old niggas would be like, man, man, these niggas ain't gangster, man. Ain't no gangster getting on camera, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like, nah, it's just the, the, the and we know what gangster is, but we talking about for the young niggas, right? Mm -hmm. So, so people understand we going in and out of the conversation from old nigga conversation, mature, to young nigga conversation. Mm -hmm. So, like, in a sense of a young nigga, Nah, the, the word gangster just looked different. Yeah. So yeah, you ain't get on camera back in the day because that wasn't cool. But also, we ain't had no cameras to get on, nigga. Right, like, right. It ain't like you had social media, yeah. son. So when people, when the old niggas be like, yeah, man, we ain't, we ain't do that camera shit. Like, we ain't, nigga, we ain't had no cameras. Right, like, you right, know what I'm saying? Right, Whereas right, though, yeah. it looked different now. So the nigga that's getting on camera just because he getting on camera talking that shit don't mean that's probably a battery in his back for him to do it. Right, to exactly. To be honest, yeah. like niggas be sleeping on niggas. They, they, like, uh, the nigga ain't bought it because he, he posted it on Instagram. It's right. like, eh, and niggas don't be understanding that battery in the back is real. Mm. That battery in the back is real. It could go either way. When you when you when you officially get a battery put in your back, it can go up or down. For mm, sure. Mm, mm. Yo, uh, it was a uh, it was a question. How did you phrase it, Alex? I, I don't even mess it up. But it was like something about having love in the city versus keeping the love in the city, right? And, uh, shout out to my my uh, producer Alex because this is a great question. The way he informed. Shout it. out to Alex. Mm. We talking about you getting like we know you. You got love in the city, right? Mm -hmm. But we talk about keeping the love in the city. I feel like we've seen, um, and this conversation gets redundant at this point, but this is different. Mm -hmm. So Wale, right? right. He um, he posted like uh, his show dates, mm -hmm. but he he left DC off on purpose because he had something special for DC. Right. And everybody goes in an uproar. Mm -hmm. But then he posts it, and I don't even, I, don't, I feel like the energy wasn't the same. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, the love wasn't nowhere near as great as the crit critiques was when they seen that it wasn't, it wasn't on, on it, right? DC date, yeah. And I was wondering, like, from you, being from the city, like, we know you got the love. Is it harder to keep the love? Like, um, nah, not really. Because when love is, when, when it's genuine, nah, not really. You feel mm -hmm. me? Um. You know, the internet just do a great job of trolling. The internet, you know, you 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 can't you can create fake accounts and write what you want. You feel what I'm saying? So, um, and you gotta understand while they've been dealing with a lot of hate since he since, <laughs> since Nike boots. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean it is what it is. And you know what I just realized? Shout out to Wale too. I just went to his show in um Atlanta at, at the Tabernacle, mm -hmm. right? When you got that type of love, how can you possibly entertain or care about the hate that you get? These people still love Wale. Can we get Wale age real quick? Yeah. These people still love Wale. It's bitches still showing their titties, throwing bras, throwing panties, not paying attention to their man. It's grown adult males. At these shows, at these concerts, I'm, I'm talking about singing word for word, man. I got about 100 videos in my phone because I just couldn't believe, like, my dog, like, and I'm looking like, first and foremost, wish I had the following and fan base that Wale had, me personally, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Wish I had that type of fan base and following. And But I'm looking at the concert and I'm like, bro, how could you possibly even care or entertain your hate? Look how many people love you, bro. State to state, worldwide. Radio stations I'll tell you the type of person Wale is real quick. He he got in town and was calling a couple people, right? 
And a couple people didn't know he had a concert, right? So he was like, yo, he went into panic mode. Bro, get on the phone with every radio station, man. We need to fly around and go to the radio station and let them know I'm gonna be at the Tabernacle tonight. Like, how does Greg Street not know I'm here? How does such and such not know I'm here? And I'm like, I understand where you're coming from. So I'm like, fuck it. You wanna go to all the radio stations right now, even though you're supposed to be getting dressed to get on stage, right? Like, this is what you wanna do right now? Mm -hmm. In Atlanta traffic, he like, yeah, I wanna do it. I'm like, all right, bet. We're gonna go do it, right? And I'm sitting here thinking like, all right, so I wonder if he panicking like this. Honestly, in my mind, I'm keeping real. I'm like, I wonder what the ticket sales doing. Like, what do you think? Like, how, is the what the venue gonna be? We get in the venue. It ain't a motherfucking soul who don't know Wale is in Atlanta, man. What the fuck is you talking about, man? And I think on this night, on the same street, he said, who else had a concert on the same street on the night as Wale? It was Jasmine Sullivan mm. and somebody else. Jeez. It was three artists on one block, whatever that block is in Georgia, where they got all these venues in it. So he was like, he was panicking and shit. And I'm like, all right, I'm being quiet. I'm on the phone and shit. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, damn, you know, if he if he if he in panic mode like this, trying to wrestle the radio station, maybe the ticket sales ain't do good or something. We get in the venue, bro. They called him out. First of all, you know, before you get on the stage, the crowd always thought that, wow, like, mm -hmm. wow, like. So I'm like, okay, it sound good. You know what I'm saying? I get out there, it's a packed house. You can't book no more seats in this venue. Like, what would you pack? So that's just how he is, bro. He, I don't know. But. Yeah, I'm telling you, he might have to do the podcast, bro. He getting used to it. He like, what, what's Wale age? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How nah, because I be peeping shit. 40? Yeah. Wale what? 40? Come on, bro. Yeah. That's on, crazy, bro. man. Hey, man, arenas and shit, House of Blues and Fillmore's and shit like that, man. Come so, on. All right, I want and I wanted to ask you this before we had went deep into the interview, the conversation. Yo, I understand the growth, but can I talk to the human side of Trail for a second, right? Because mm -hmm. we know you grow, like the growth is there, right? Um, but far as like what you think when nobody's around, so. Do you feel like you get the love you deserve at times? Of course not. Mm. Of course not. Of course not. And why, mm. why so? Um, me personally, I feel as though I don't get the love I deserve because of the things that I'm not willing to do in order for you to pay attention to my music or to, in order for you to tap into my Instagram. There's certain things I'm not willing to do. Mm. I'm not willing to get on these platforms and talk crazy and say, or say anything out of my mouth or do anything for for followers or clout or for new ticket sales or for more ticket sales. Um, I'm not willing to get on Instagram live and tip to the detectives and to the prosecutors and to the judges and, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not willing to name drop the <clears throat> niggas who I know for sure if they see me, they're going to shoot me or they're going to kill me. I'm not willing to put their names in records. I'm not willing to antagonize them in, in records because... I'm under that. I'm from under that law where when you was beefing with somebody, it was a secret. Only you, only your hood and that hood knew y'all was beefing. Maybe the Go Go bands knew y'all was beefing because of how much you was getting into mm -hmm. it in the, in the Go Go. But females didn't know who you was beefing with. Uh, older people didn't know who you was beefing with. You tried your best to keep the detectives and the prosecutors and the DAs and the judges out of your life. Where now you have to do it. In order to, so you, know, you know what I'm saying? You can't say, man, I just got a thousand bows in. You got to shoot a music video and show them a thousand pounds of marijuana. I'm not willing to do that mm -hmm. to sell records. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm fine with my fan base. I'm fine with the love that I do give them. Like I said, like I told you earlier, I can't focus on the, the love that I'm not getting. You know what I'm saying? The fan base that I'm not getting. I can't focus on that because that ain't meant for me. Because mm -hmm. if I got to do that to get you to love me or to get you to press play on my album or to get you to purchase a ticket to my concert, I don't want you at my concert. Mm. I'm, I'm speaking to the real hustlers and the real steppers and the baddest bitches. Mm. That's who I want to come see me. That's who I want to play my album. Nigga, if you's a sucker, I don't even want you to play my shit. No, you know no. what I'm saying? If you, if you had a three hour interrogation with detective such and such, I don't want you to play my shit. Mm. This shit ain't for you. I don't, I don't even want you to get a piece of this law, nigga. My shit like the Bible. If you a rat, I don't even want my words seeping into your brain because you already made some bad choices. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? So I don't focus on that. Nah, facts. And that's why I said I wanted to talk to the like human side because I know it's, it's times where we human. You might think about it. And not even about the things you don't do, but like last time I interviewed you, right, 
I was really adamant, and I, and I meant this. I came on like, man, this is a DC legend. Right. Because you are, right? Yeah. Thank you. And I was wondering, like, because sometimes we can overlook ourselves. And I was wondering, like, do you feel that from DC? Do you feel that from your peers? Do you still feel like Fat Trail? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course I do. I feel, I feel, I, yeah, I definitely feel I was about to say something crazy. Yeah, <laughs> I feel, no homo, both sides of the, you know what I'm saying, of what you're trying to say. But at the same time, it's like, it is what it is, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, those who love me, love me for whatever reason they do. I I appreciate that. You feel me? And those who don't fuck with me or who don't like me, I appreciate that, too. Because whether you know it or not, you play a, a, a intricate part of my thought process into writing down these lyrics, into what I want to say on a podcast when I come sit down. You play a role in that anyway. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because I, I we never forget those who doubted us. We never forget those who said, man, Jay Hill ain't going to be able to purchase a camera, let alone get a popping pocket. We appreciate you for that, man, because mm -hmm. your hate gave me the motivation to say, you know what, nigga? Six cameras, eight mics, 10 people with working staff. Nigga, we could take this shit on the road. We could do it. That's motivation. You feel me? Mm. Motivation. Nah, that's hard. Yo, on, um, I listened to, uh, what was it? Uh, bury me in Nemans? Yeah, bury me in Nemans. You was like, um, I had to go talk to the preacher, cancel all my features. Mm hmm What exactly did you mean? Meaning that's that's um when I say that, that's a way of telling you that some days I get so disturbed that I cancel my day. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So when I say had to go talk to the preacher, cancel all my features, what I mean is I don't believe in going to multiple churches, first of all, right? I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in going going to multiple churches. The church that my mother and my grandmother brought me up in was down where my grandmother lived at. So in order for me to go to church, I got to drive four hours away. So when I do want to go speak to my pastor, name is Bishop Bennett. Shout out Bishop Bennett and the Greater Candelaine Baptist Church in Gretna, Virginia, too. Matter of fact, let me shout them out. Um, when I do want to go get some mental healing or go speak with my pastor, I literally had to cancel my whole day because my drive is already four hours. Mm. So I'm leaving Saturday night anyway. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not the type of dude that's going to fake like, like I be super duper going to church. I don't. My manager is a great example. He make me feel like a piece of shit every Sunday because he either go to church or he watch church on his phone. Mm. And I feel like a piece of shit when he doing it because I'm looking for the football game. You know mm. what I'm saying? But I say that to say, I said that line to say, Whenever I go see him, I do got to cancel my whole day to go speak with him and, and go around my aunts and my cousins and them and get that love. And me doing that, that's very important because some people say, oh, mental health, you need to see a therapist. You need to, nah, I just go get, go see my pastor and go around my family. And, and that helps a lot with my mental health. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, that's, that's a, what I mean that's by a, that. It's still a form of therapy, though. Yeah, yeah. Nah, right. But people... No, nah, I'm not. First of all, I'm not knocking how you get your therapy. Yeah. You feel me? I'm not knocking that. I'm not knocking that. It's just like people, like when people hear the stuff that I go through, they be like, yo, you ever thought about getting into therapy or seeing a, a mental health? And I be like, the only time I seen mental health was when the government made me, when they was releasing me from prison. Mm. Instead of me seeing a therapist, what I go do is X, Y, and Z. That's what I'm yeah. saying. You no, me? I'm saying it's like seeing your bishop, bro. That's a that's a form of therapy. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying like that's even I feel like it's weird how people try to put their own constraints on things because whatever you do, if you right. work out, if you yeah. hang out with your friends, yeah. that's a form of therapy. Therapy. But like we got all these walking, rock climbing. We got all these doctors out here who want to. <laughs> you need to see the lady and do this and like, yeah. bro, just because you're and then they want to push them pills in your face. Yeah, like. Bro, my therapy don't have to look like your therapy. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? As long as you are able to get somewhere to have some type of healthy decompression of your thoughts and your mind, yeah. I think you will do good. You know what I'm saying? Bro, one of my friends just told me that his PlayStation is his therapy. Mm. Yeah, I can see that. And I totally understood why. You feel me? I totally understood what he meant by, man, dog, this is my therapy right here, bro. Yeah. Like, if I ain't had this, I, blah, blah, blah. I totally under like when I bought a PlayStation and they showed me how to you know get online and I'm adding all my friends and we talking we taking shots together playing the game drunk bullshit playing the, I it it brought me back to when that nigga said that and I told myself man if I should have been bought a PlayStation mm. then I started asking myself man I wonder if I had a PlayStation would I have caught all them motherfucking charges I caught when I wasn't in the studio and when I wasn't on stage working mm. if I had a PlayStation 
J. Hill, I probably would have been in a crib. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so thanks. therapy could be, man, I just seen people who go swimming for therapy, like play golf for therapy. Whatever. Nah, fact. <laughs> Y'all asked you about um, did you think you did you feel the love? Because again, I think I, I felt you the, probably be, you you probably been hearing about all the hate I be I be getting. That's probably not what not, it is. not even the hate, bro. Like the, it's not even the hate because I see it here and there, mm -hmm. but um, nah, I just it's not the hate. I swear because I I, I don't say now I'm, I'm lying. I, I don't say it that much. <laughs> but what I will say is I don't see the love either. Right, and that's what made me think about it because I went to listen to your project right when I, I knew I was doing the interview, mm -hmm. and I'm not lying. I'm like, yo, this shit sound good. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, it it not only sounds good, it sounds like the shit that's in. Right, yeah. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, I don't understand what's the holdup. And I'm like, maybe he need a, a big budget behind him. Yeah. I, I I just didn't understand. I'm going to be real. I'm like, uh -huh. I, I, I'm like, yo, do you feel it? Like, do you feel like as people, that's oh, how yeah, they receive? Oh, yeah, nah, nah, yeah. But like I told you, yeah. So now I get what you're saying. Yeah, like I told you, nah, I don't pay attention to that. I don't pay attention to how... You know, whether this rap caviar and, um, you know what I'm saying? The blog, I don't pay attention to that because, these, first of all, these are all things that I done done already. XXL, Vibe, Source, all I done been there, done all that. So, like I said, I really focus on me. I, mm -hmm. I really focus on my fan base and really who fuck with my shit. Like, I'm not paying attention to whether, damn, bro, uh, this blog ain't post my tape. This one of my hardest tape. Like, nah, I don't focus on that. Yeah. I let the fans debate and, you know, the label going to work and do, the team going to do whatever it is that they do, and that's fine. But what don't, what what, what ain't meant for me, ain't for me. No, nah, facts. So, wait, wait, wait. Because you did say something. Where, where does where does the hate come from? What you mean? You said I seen the hate. I oh, no, no, no. I mean, because I'm asking, I was saying that because you still from home. So, I bet. Like, I be in Georgia a lot now, right? Mm -hmm. And I be peeping, like, a lot of, Atlanta media pop up on my phone and I'm thinking as being as though we from home, you probably still get some media back home that pop up yeah. on your phone. Now I was or wondering, might, is it hate like niggas is, is, it, is it's don't... just hate, it's just hate, hate period. You feel what I'm saying? Like these, all these blogs and you know, these stories and shit, period, point blank, but it is what it is. It's what come with it. Nah, thanks, yeah. man. You right, man. This is good, dog. I appreciate you for pulling up, man. Nah, man. I thank you for having me, of man. Course. We always have a great conversation. Always, bro. Anything that we didn't touch on that we, um, we might've forgot anything? That you got going on? For me? Mm -hmm. Oh, nah, whatever. Nah, it's cool. Nah, man. Whatever you want to touch on, I'm cool. Nah, man. I was making sure we got a project out right now. Yeah. Uh, you sent me some? What did you say? You just emailed, you said. Go ahead, go ahead. Hell yeah. Hmm. He from DC, too. Two. My bad, my bad. He from DC. Okay. Oh, okay. Of myself? That's a great question, bro. The question was, because he don't have a mic. Okay, yeah. His question so was, um... His, his, question, his question was... My bad, go no, ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> nah, his, que <laughs> his question was, which one of my albums was rate my favorite album, or which one of my albums was my favorite album? And I believe he said his was SDMG1, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so... <sighs> I'm gonna have to say my favorite. When you say favorite, though, like would would describe favorite? We like, got the uh, you uh, hold up. We got the um XLR court. Give us a second, man. Describe Talk favorite. Talk about something else real quick. Uh, we about to you can go over there, Alex. We about to uh, plug the mic up. Um, before we go into that. I don't know. What the fuck should we? We trying to kill some time. Nah, I just <laughs> want to know. No, because he's going to plug the mic up. So right. Ask yeah, it. I just want to know what's his. I could, I could better answer that question if you describe his But favorite. he's actually from D.C. Oh, for real? Yeah. Okay, bet. Yeah. I mean, wait, where, where you from? Merlin. Oh, them exactly. niggas ain't from D.C., man. Mm -hmm. You know niggas always want to say. What part, bro? What part of Merlin you from? Moco. Moco, okay, yeah. You know, it's funny because like being from Baltimore, right, before I got older and knew what was going on, I used to think it was Baltimore, PG County, and then D.C. I yeah. thought PG County was like, I thought it was everything. Yeah, the whole state of Maryland yeah, outside whole, of Baltimore. Exactly. Right, yeah, yeah. Then I found out, yeah, Montgomery County. You uh, had, Anne Arundel County. Yeah, I'm like, man. Charles County. Nah, yeah. facts. Yeah, yeah. I can't say I'm from D.C. to a, a real D.C. nigga. That's that's right. taboo. We got nah, the... Nah, uh, people, people, they be having debates about that too. Like, when people be out of town, and you could be either from Maryland or Virginia, but if you're out of town, or let's say you in Florida, and you meet a couple, and they from South Carolina... When they and but you really live in 
PG County or Montgomery County or something. But if that couple and if that couple asks you, where you from? They gonna say DC. DC, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get that thing from all the time. Yeah. Yo, before all right, since he working on the mic, I got a question for you. Yo, what up? Did you ever overlook a young nigga who had motion, but you ain't see it, and then they come back to bite you on the ass? No, never. I've never overlooked anybody, but I got a great story, right? It's crazy that you asked me this, right? I promise to God I'm not making this up, right? You can ask him. 21 Savage, right? I met 21 Savage twice. Both times was in the studio. Mm. Both times I was asleep. Oh, my God. Right? I ain't going to lie, high sleep. You know what I'm saying? The first time, they was like, yo, Trail, get up. 21 Savage here. I was like, huh? Like, 21 Savage here. I'm like, all right. I go back to sleep. He walk in. They wake me up again. He like, what up? I dop him up. Wake up. Dop him up. Boom. They like, yo, get up. Like, get up. Nigga, he about to go record. Like, go in there with him. Like, yeah. y'all go make some shit. I'm like, all right. All right, I got you. Went back to sleep. Woke up. It was, the sun was up. Everybody was gone. Studio empty. Damn. Right? And I know for a fact that one time was in Mid-East Studios in Virginia. Now, the second time... I don't remember where we was at, whether it was Atlanta, Miami, New York, D.C. I don't remember what studio it was. Second time, I'm in the studio sleep. 21 Savage in. 21 Savage in, man. Get up, bro. You hear me? And I stayed asleep. So to answer that question, I never overlooked him. It never was a point where I was like, uh, I don't want to work with that nigga. Like, because I love 21 Savage music. You know what I'm saying? But, um... I never overlooked him, but that I, I had a chance to work with him twice, and I was too fucked up, right? Too fucked up to get up and work, and that's one of those. That's one of the things I regret was was not being able to create some music with Savage for sure. I only ask that, right? Mm -hmm. Cause I'm gonna put myself on blast. Fuck it, right? Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with it. So, uh, you real niggas, man. Look, I um, hold. On, I don't want to mess this up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm gonna tell you exactly. So, Prez. From DC, he was Fat Yee manager. Mm -hmm. He got me to interview with Fat Yee, mm -hmm. but like this was years ago. This was before I was in Atlanta, and I like I appreciated him for that. Okay. But he had hit me later, like maybe years later, to do a Nino Pay interview, mm -hmm. and I didn't know, I didn't recognize the name Prez, and I, you know what I'm saying, right. and I didn't even know Nino Pay. So I'm like, yo, this. Oh, you, oh, so he texts you. He didn't call you. <laughs> yeah, he texts me. So okay. I'm like, all right, it, this is the process to do the interview. Right. He like, nigga, we ain't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not. It's a, he was like, nigga, it's a business, nigga, you know. know who you talking to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he like, well, I'm good, bro. Don't worry about it. So I, um, I'm going back home and I want to like pull up on niggas in the hood and do like interviews. And I ask everybody, mm -hmm. who is the next hottest nigga coming out of DC? Everybody. I mean, it was hands down. Everybody says. Nino Pay. Right. So I say, are you familiar with Nino Pay? Yeah. Okay, I say Nino Pay. Everybody say Nino Pay. Somebody right back, give me his manager. So somebody sent me the number. So I go to text the number. And it popped up. And it pops up. So, <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to do the interview. Mm -hmm. And you know, we all the same in DMV, right? Like, we, like, we all the same. He like, nigga, no. Like, what do you mm -hmm. mean? Like, I hit you. Mm -hmm. You try to, you feel me? Like, he yeah. like, nah. <laughs> and it dawned on me. Uh, he like, yo, after like, I got you the uh, ye interview and everything. I'm like, right. Oh, you like, oh, it's you. Oh, no. Nah. And he so, like, and he like, but he was like, cause it was, he was like, man, don't um, I'm not trying to be rude or nothing. I'm just being straightforward. Yeah. I'm like, first of all, nigga, we men. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. cause he was like, Adam, he was like, he wasn't like on no pussy. He was like, nigga, nah, nah, I tried to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I tried I'm not to. taking it personal, yeah, yeah. but I'm letting him know. I'm like, yo, I ain't even when he said the fat ye shit, I'm like, bro, I didn't even put that together. Cause right. I ain't even gonna lie, you could have brought me anybody. Cause at that time, before I was in Atlanta. I had motion, but I wasn't getting like big celebrities. Exactly. You know what I'm trying to say? I was getting who I could get. Exactly. So I would have, nigga, I would have put anybody on just for the fact that you showed me love. I had to say that because, like, boy, I'm like, I, and another person, this, I'm an idiot times two. I was doing a DTLR freestyle. This is a while, a long time ago. This is when I first, like, got popping. Mm -hmm. Boy, I'm DMing No Savage to do a freestyle. Mm -hmm. Or I don't think he DM me or whatever. And I'm dragging my feet. And like, I think two years later, somebody like, yo, you should get no savage on, bro. 
And, and it, 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 it was too far it was gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo, you fucking idiot. Shout out No Savage, man. Free No Savage, man. Bro, Alan, go ahead, man. You got the question, bro. We got the audio set up. Yeah, we good. We got the audio set up? Mm-hmm. Oh, go ahead. Uh, nah, but as far as favorite albums, I was right. just like most complete album. Like I feel like start to finish, it's every song at SDMG a hit in my opinion. But oh, you mean your okay, favorite you're talking album about as far as that creating it? Yeah. Okay, but if you if you say like most complete, see you giving me too too many different definitions. But I right, but let me try to answer your question to the best of my ability, right? Um, I feel like my most complete album was probably um, Nightmare on E Street, mm. the original one. You know what I'm saying? Just by like the sound and, you know, man, we went out L.A. and we made music with these dudes and these dudes. Okay, cool. So most complete album to me, in my opinion, the one who I, the one I felt like, damn, like everybody know who I am now type shit. Like that was Nightmare on E Street, the original one. My favorite album that I had the most fun creating and working with the producers on this tape and was On The Run 1. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Was on the run one because first of all, I was really on the run. You know what I'm saying? And, <laughs> this thing um, is crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, nah, I be trying to keep it 100 though. Like, I was really on the run. You know mm. what I'm saying? Um, so first of all, I was on the run, and I was with my friends. We was we was uh, I I wasn't trying to fly because of all the warrants yeah. and shit. So, nigga, we was on a sprinter driving all through the United States of America, going everywhere, you know what I'm saying? Ohio and, bro, like, it, On The Run 1 was, like, my favorite project to create. I'm going to give you one story, right? My homie, he never drove a Mercedes Sprinter van before, right? Mm-hmm. So he driving a Sprinter. The Sprinter runs out of gas. Right? <laughs> Yo, no cap. We on the side of the highway. What state was we in? I can't remember the state. Forgive me for not remembering the state, but I know it was like one of those southern, you need to be scared of the police states, right? Man, we had, oh man, we had so much shit in this Sprinter van, bro. Like, Mm. enough for a federal charge anyway because we crossing state lines. I'm not going to name what we had in the Sprinter van, but we had everything that, you know. Yeah, yeah. We had it in the van. We run out of gas, right? We in the middle of nowhere. We don't know where we at, right? A police officer pulls up. <laughs> police pulls up. Whoa. What's going on? You guys need help in there? <laughs> we in that bitch trying to fail. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody play sleep, play sleep, play sleep. Right, right in the back place. The, uh, yeah, so I ran out of gas, sir. Um, this is my first time driving this type of, uh, you know, I never... Paid attention to the dash. I done ran out of gas. He said, all right, well, let me go back to my car and see if I got a gas can. As soon as he walked away, I said, he ain't checking for no gas can, y'all. He about to run the tags, and he about to see if he could get probable cause to search this motherfucker, right? So, boom, we in the back debating and shit. So, he, he came back to the door. I think he about to say, all right, so can I see some license and registration? And he's like, all right, so who's going to ride with me to the gas station? I don't have a gas can. And so we got to purchase one and we got to put some gas in it. Sheesh. Oh, we in the back of the van like, who you pop with him? No, who pop with him? Y'all know I ain't getting the car with no motherfucking police. We in this bitch. I'm in like, what? And that was one of the greatest stories. My homie, so so I got to I gotta keep it gangster. We had, to, we, we, we had to elect Z Wayne, my homie Z Wayne. Shout out to Z. Mm-hmm. We had to elect Z to ride. With the officer to go get the gas, man, because Z ain't, he ain't no felon. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Everybody else is in the car like, man, we felons, man. I ain't trying to go back to jail. Da, da. <laughs> Z like, man, we need to get the fuck off the highway. I'm about to ride with this nigga. I'm like, all right, back where ride with him, brody. So it was like stories like that mm. when we created that project on the run that made, you know what I'm saying? And then that's why I love Ross. I'm always forever be indebted to Ross. I love Rose. When I was on the run, Gave me the keys yeah. to one of the cars and one of the cribs yeah. and said, stay there for as long as you want to till you get this shit figured out, till you get it situated or whatever you got to do, stay right there. Watch watch how many people you have in there because he know I like to have, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? He was like, watch that. But at the same time, 
do you. Mm. And um, so we created the whole on the run project in Ross basement. Damn. Yeah. That's fire. Yeah. Now that was good. Good question, bro. <laughs> yeah, that was a great question. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah. Now this is fire, bro. Man, like you said, every time we link up, dog, man, whatever you need, some support or whatever. Absolutely. I'm here, bro. I got you, bro. Man. The same thing, man. Whenever you need me, bro. My Appreciate God. you for having me. Already, man. Fat Trail. Uh, Mr. J Hill, J Hill, the podcast is a wrap. We out.